Hello my dear friends, I am Sujoy and I am back with a new series of tutorials for you. In this series of tutorials, I am telling you how to do project management using network analysis. This is my second video on critical path method. In my first video on critical path method, I have explained how to draw the network diagram from the activity table, how to find out the critical paths using the shortcut technique, also some properties of critical path. So if you want to know how to draw the network diagram or the shortcut technique, just watch my previous video. Link to all my previous videos is given in the video description below. So for now, I will tell you how to find out the critical path in detailed but accurate way. So let's start. So here the network is already given. So for some basics, the circles represents event and the arrows represents activity. An activity can be represented in two ways. Number one by its name or by its alphabet like activity A. Activity A can also be represented as 1-2 where 1 represents the start event of activity A and 2 represents the end event of activity A. Next to each activity there are some numeric values that represents the duration of activity in weeks. For example activity A requires 1 week to complete. Similarly activity B requires 4 weeks to complete. Next, activity A, B and C are called starting activities because they are starting from the starting event. Also, starting activities don't have any predecessor activity. That means there is not any activity preceding them. To know more about the predecessor activity, do watch my previous video on critical path method, video 1. So for now, this was the basic Let's start drawing the table. So first make the table structure and make the columns. So in first column write activity and then write down all the activities from the network diagram in increasing order. So I have written all the activities starting from A ending at H in increasing order. Next write down the unique start and end event pair next to each activity. For example for activity A the start event is 1 and end event is 2 that is written next to it. Next write down the duration and in that write down the respective duration for each activity from the network diagram. These data are given in the network diagram write them out. Next we will start our numeric calculation. So we have to calculate two times number one is the earliest time and in that there is earliest start time or EST for short and the earliest finish time or EFT for short. Remember the earliest time is calculated from top to bottom that is downward. Next is the latest time. In that there is also two values latest start time or LST and latest finish time or LFT. Remember the latest time is calculated from bottom to top that is upward and next is total float or TF. I will explain how to calculate all of them. The first some formulas are there. EFT or earliest finish time is equals to earliest start time plus the duration. Next is the LST or latest start time which is equals to LFT or latest finish time minus the duration of the activity. Next is TF or total float which equals to LFT minus EFT for each activity. Let's calculate the earliest time. So first we we'll start with the activity A, B and C since they are the starting activities. And starting activities since they don't have any predecessor activity has the starting value all zeros. So for activity A, B and C the EST or earlier start time will be 0, 0, 0. and their EFT will be their EST plus their duration. So 0 plus 1 equals to 1, 0 plus 4 equals to 4, 0 plus 3 equals to 3. Next is the activity D which is the predecessor activity of B. That means B must be finished before D can start. Before starting D, the starting value is 4. And the ending value is 4 plus the duration 
that is 4 plus 9 13 next activity e we start from event 2 and there is a catch to reach event 2 we can choose two ways 1 2 which cost 1 or bd which cost 4 plus 9 13 we will take the maximum value in this case so we will take 13 so the earliest start time of e is 13 and earliest finish time is 13 plus its duration that is 20 next activity f the start value is 3 and end value is 3 plus 2 5 next activity g which has the start value of 3 plus 2 5 and end value is 5 plus 5 10 and finally activity h we start from event 5 to reach event 5 again we have a choice either we can go via ae which takes 1 plus 7 8 or via bde which cost 13 plus 7 20 we will take the maximum value which is 20 plus the duration 8 equals to 28 so that's it we have successfully calculated the earliest time next we will calculate the latest time our next step is to find out the maximum value among all the values in EFT column and here our maximum value is 28 which sits at the bottom but remember at a different question the value may not be at bottom it may be anywhere in the middle so just look for the maximum value in RDS finish time column and just copy the value at the bottom of latest finish time column that is our first step for latest time next from this value we will subtract the duration so 28 minus 8 equals to 20 and now I will tell you a shortcut technique for h the left side value is 5 and the right side value is 7 so here the left side value is for 5 and the right side value is for 7 so activity h is done next for activity g the left side value is 6 and right side value is 7 so we already know the value for 7 is 28 we will simply write that next we will subtract the duration from this value so 28 minus 5 equal to 23 which is the value for 6 because it is in left, left side next activity f that right side we have 6 and we know the value for 6 is 23 so we will simply write that here and 23 minus the duration 2 equals to 21 and 21 is the value for 4 because it is in left side next for activity e the right side value is 5 and we already know the value for 5 is 20 so we will just copy that and 20 minus 7 equals to 13 next activity d which has the value 2 at right hand side and we know the value for 2 is 13 so we will simply copy that and 13 minus 9 equals to 4 next activity c at right side the value is 4 and we know the value for 4 is 21 so we will write 21 and 21 minus 3 equals to 18 next activity b right side value is 3 and the value for 3 is 4 so we will write the 4 and 4 minus 4 equals to 0 and finally activity a which has the value 2 at right hand side and we know the value for 2 is equals to 13 so we write the 13 here and 13 minus 1 equals to 12 but remember while picking any value from the left hand side if we have multiple occurrences of the same number for example 1 3 here and 1 3 here then we will 
compare the two values and take the minimum value so for latest time we will take the minimum value and for earliest time we will take the maximum value and for earliest time it's also called the forward pass calculation because we'll take the value in forward pass that is we'll read as 1 to 2 but in backward pass we we'll read them as 7 to 5 next we'll calculate the total float values or tf the tf equals to lft minus eft so for activity a lft is 13 and eft is 1 so 13 minus 1 12. Similarly for B, LFT is 4, EFT is also 4. So 4 minus 4 equals to 0. And this is our one of the critical activity. Because the property of critical path says that the critical activities has 0 total float. So we have got our first critical activity that is 1 to 3. This one. Critical activities are denoted or highlighted by double lines or thick lines as I have done in the network. So our first critical activity is 1 to 3 or the activity B. Similarly for C, LFT is 21, EFT is 3. So 21 minus 3 is equal to 18. So just follow the procedure for each of the activity and you will get this column and here we have four zeros one for activity one to three next for three that is activity d next for two to five that is activity e and finally five to seven for activity h so if we link them you will get one to three three to two two to five and five to seven and this is our critical path. Remember, our critical path is that path we start from the starting event. Here the starting event is 1 and which ends at ending event. Our ending event is 7 and which has the maximum value. So this path 1, 3, 2, 5, 7 has the maximum value of 28. So our critical path is 1, 3, 2, 5, 7 in event notation or in activity notation it's B D E H and our critical cost is equals to 4 for B plus 9 for D plus 7 for E plus 8 for H that's equals to 4 plus 9 plus 7 plus 8 28 so we can say the minimum time needed to complete the project is 28 weeks so friend this was my video on critical path method how was the video? Let me know in the comments below. I will upload more videos in the series. So don't forget to subscribe to YouTube channel. So that when I upload my next video, you get an email if you subscribe. And don't forget to like and share the video among your friends and family. Because knowledge is meant to be shared. So thanks for watching. See you in my next video. And still then, stay connected by subscribing.